everybody, welcome to Life According to Logan. Um, I'm just doing this really quick right now. I am going to get into the sim lab, um, what happened there. Um, you're seeing me first thing in a truck, so you know that I pass, but for those of you that are curious, like what you have to do in the sim lab for that safety class, I'm going to go ahead and get into that later. But right now, I am in a truck, I'm taking a look at it and deciding on whether or not I want it. I do want it because I want to get <laughs> going and getting on the road. But I'm doing the inspection. I know it's all dark. You can't really see. Uh, maybe I'll post a picture of it if I can figure out how to like blur out my specific numbers. Because um, that's yeah, you know, that's personal. I mean, if you happen to see me out there, you know, whatevs. But I don't think I want to put that all on the internet. I can't believe I said whatevs. I don't think I've ever said that before. Wow. I don't know. I got woke up. I was going to sleep in a little bit today, but uh, they gave me a call about 8:30ish, 8:45, and of course I answered that. And I got out here on the lot and um, I already did um, a look over on the lights and everything outside. There's only one problem I found so far on the outside and that's on the, um, the APU unit, that door. Uh, one of the latches won't latch. So it just it only has one latch that'll work. So I don't know what's going on, if I got to push on it or what. I'll, I'll work on it in a minute. But I took a picture of that. I'm going to make a note of it. But this is like a really freaking exciting day. Like anyone going through this program or at least a lot of people, uh, I gave up a lot to pursue this dream, and I got through my TNT despite my accident, which by the way, yeah, I posted that three weeks ago, but that particular accident I was talking about happened much further out, like during my first month of actual training. So it still beats me up inside that I did that, but if you're wondering what I'm talking about, the last video I did where I got 10,000 uh, extra miles added to my uh, my mileage from TNT, rightfully so. I, I deserve those. Uh, if you want to know what happened, go ahead. You can watch that video if you want. You don't have to. But uh, Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and continue with looking at this because this is Saturday and they are only open until noon. So um, I don't want to be rushed at all, but I want to have enough time to look over everything thoroughly. And I, I should have enough time. So double check everything. Um, this I want to drive it around, but it's on empty. So, like, what am I going to do? Just drive it over to the bay and get it fueled up? Maybe I should. I don't know. Maybe I should. At least get, like, a couple gallons anyway. And, uh, anyways, I'll check back in with you later. Bye. All right. So, um, it's been quite a day. I did, like, two inspections on the truck and stuff, but I'll go into that here in a minute. Um, what I want to talk about this time is the simulation lab and that first class and if you watched my last video you know I was really worried about it because I just worry about that kind of thing like a pass or fail and you know I worked so hard to earn my CDL and I worked hard through TNT and um, you know I had a, an accident in TNT that really shut down what little confidence I felt like I was finally building but it was in the beginning of my TNT phase so uh, but anyways that first um, classes. You start out a safety class, really. Oh, it's weird. It sounded like someone was trying to get into my uh, room, but uh, so, anyways, it's a safety class. You watch a bunch of videos, um, and then everyone takes their turn on the simulator. And there's like five of them here. And I've never been to the Missouri um, terminal before. This place is huge. It's really impressive, though. But uh, anyway. Um, everyone's going to take turns driving and you're not, this isn't the backing thing because not everyone that's in there is there for upgrading. Some people are new hires and they already have their CDL. Some of them, um, you know, need to take the class because maybe they had something happen out there. You know, there's, I guess there's quite a few reasons for taking it or, you know, just to refresh. So we all, and it, it, we all get into, um, the simulators for our turn and you do two drives or two drive assessments. And so some people during the first assessment will be asked to drive into a truck stop and park in the safest place available. This is not part of the backing test. Uh, I didn't get that particular scenario when I drove this time. However, keep in mind if that's you, you don't have to back. Okay, the keyword is find the safest place to park. There are pull through spots. I recommend doing that. And even the guy said, look, the safest way to back is don't back unless you have to. So do a pull through. So if that's you, do the pull through. So you're going to do two driving assessments. And the first one I did, <clears throat> excuse me, 
um, went through a, a, a school zone. And so there's a kid coming out here. I did not hit them. And another kid came out and I did not hit them. And then I got past the school zone. And then like a car came out and another car came out down. And I, I didn't hit them because I was going like very cautiously slow. And so that was my first assessment. And my second assessment I recognized because that's the one I did in Pittston for that pass and fail, you know, where they, they send you home that day if you don't drive well enough. So I'm like, Ugh, I got this and went through and did that and did just fine. I started feeling disoriented though on that one. So then we take a little bit of a break. We come back and those of us that come back, it's just me and there was like, like three other people that were doing the upgrade. And so we had to do the backing thing. <clears throat> so for those of you who want to know, the instructor is going to show you exactly how to do it. He's going to show you how to set up for a straight back. You're not you're not starting in the straight back position. So you're going to come up this road and there's going to be like a building here. Okay, there's going to be like a building that you got to go around this way, right? Which made me nervous because that's how I got into my accident, coming around a building like this. Um, and then like on the, so you're coming around, let's say you're coming around the building this way right and then the dock is in this other building that's set back right and then there's another building with a car like that you're going to be driving towards so you're coming around this building right and you're going to go forward towards this like little blue car that's in the, at the building across it and then he's going to show you you're going to go forward and then you're going to come around and you're going to um go towards like there's this water basin thing looking thing you're going to go towards that and you're going to kind of pull towards it and then off to the side and then that should put your back tandem set up to where you can do pretty much a straight back it shows you exactly how to do it you have 10 minutes to do this you get a practice one but if you do it fine in your practice one he'll count it and then you get another one so here i am feeling dizzy and disoriented but i'm trying to just make my do i get up there i do um, I practice one and I mess it up because like it's it's just bizarre I don't know why it affects up my brain that much and part of my language I don't know why it messes up my language uh, my um, stuff that much uh, but it, it just messes up my peripherals and I start feeling disoriented and the stuff starts looking like it's doing this it's not it's just my brain's interpretation which is incorrect so I go like I go too far away from the building because I just kept thinking oh man I remember that loves you know and then I you know I set myself up but my tandems were because I didn't get close enough to that building my tandems weren't where they needed to be and then when I started doing my backup stuff it just wasn't in the right spot but you can get out and look okay you can see different views like even you can see where you're at upward view this side view this view um so that's really nice and then he was showing me he's like hey you know you did this and i was like i'm so sorry uh i'm a little disoriented but let me give this another go so i did my my regular time and i went fucking slow <laughs> pardon my language i'm gonna try and edit that out um so i went slower this time just to, to see if it help um keep me from being as dizzy and I guess it kind of helped a little bit but I was feeling disoriented I got closer to that building did exactly what I needed to do and then um I wasn't quite like my tandems were about where they needed to be so I started going back but feeling dizzy and so I got my tandems a little bit out of line but the interesting thing about this is I knew how to get myself out of that so I was like oh yeah so I did my thing got back there I went slow so I took seven minutes out of the ten and I passed but I got it in there and it was like probably the straightest backing I'd ever done <laughs> ever. So that's what you're going to have to do at least Springfield unless they switch it up. I can't tell you what they do at the Pittston. I don't know if they have that same exact scenario. I don't know if maybe that's just one out of 10 scenarios they can choose and it'll be different when you get there. But I do know that the instructor is going to show you how to do it. At least the one here did. He's going to show you how to do it. Be like, this is how you do it. It's easy. And so, it, you know, I passed it. I felt very relieved. I had to sit outside because I was feeling dizzy. So if you're the kind of person that gets dizzy on that, just go a little bit slower. But no, you, you are timed on it. You have 10 minutes to do the backing. So, But if you get it in the first time, then you don't have to do it the second time. Um, so I got all my classes done. And I'm going to I'm going to mention something here about whether I'm going lease or company. And the only reason I'm saying anything, I wasn't going to in the beginning. I was just going to like keep it secret and then like three months later do my review on it. But 
um, when I was talking to the fleet manager and we're getting, we're like, okay, well, we're in position. Let's get to the uh, yard and start my upbringing, my upbringing, <laughs> let's start my upgrading. And he says, okay, and my, my original plan was to go lease. But as I've been on the truck with my trainer and going over things, I started leaning more towards company at first before lease because I saw the benefits in it. You know, like there are a lot of benefits to being a company driver as a new um, rookie driver because I'm like brand new to truck driving. I just earned my CDL in March. So I was actually thinking about telling him, you know, go ahead and do company. And I asked him about company. I was like, well, I was thinking about doing company. He says, well, here's the thing. And we can do that. But Prime has made some changes. And now if you want to be a company driver, you got to team with someone. Or if you want to be a solo company driver, you got to join someone else's fleet. Thought, oh, okay, well, then I'll stick to lease um, because I just don't want to team drive. I had the option of team driving with my um, trainer. He brought that up if I wanted to stay on a little bit longer. We could team drive, and I considered it because there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, but at the end of the day, I wake up every day <laughs> disoriented and stuff. I'm trying to sleep while it moving. I can get some sleep. I started getting more used to it, but it, you know, I'd get motion sickness. I'd have to sit up, you know, and and try and get through it and stuff. And and I don't want to do that for very much longer. So I decided to go lease so that I could be in a solo truck because I don't know anyone that's a fleet manager. I just don't want to deal with the extra added on bonus of is this fleet run properly? Am I going to be treated well like Prime treats us? Am I going to get my paid? Am I going to have to fight with someone about getting my pay? I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. I know that at the end of the day Prime is going to pay me and even though I, I'm going to look at it make sure I'm getting everything that's owed, owed to me. I know it's a lot of your process to get what's owed to me if for some reason it isn't on there. So, lease it is. And that's what I spent today doing was um, I got called about 8.30 this morning and um, I was the top of their list at that point when, when they called me and I went ahead and I picked a, a truck that was available and they said, okay, we'll assign you to it. This is the code. Go ahead, go take a look at it and then let us know if you are going to go with that one. And I had until noon because it is Saturday after all and they are only open until noon. So I get out to this truck and when I was waiting for the shuttle, um, someone actually came up to me and they recognized me from the channel and I think I forgot to ask your name. And if so, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry I forgot to ask your name or if or maybe I did and I forgot. I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for coming up to me. Um, let me know if how you did on your simulator. I'm sure you did well, but if you happen to see this, let me know, I'll be curious. Um, but that was really nice. I didn't expect anyone to, to recognize me. I don't really have a very big channel, so. Um, and I, I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I mean, I think you can tell by like, how rarely I update, but I want it at least when I put something on here, at least during these phases, that it's going to have information in there that hopefully you can see what I went through while going through my um, PSD, no, PDS, no, wait, Prime Student Driver, yeah, PSD, <laughs> and TNT phase, and then this leasing part. So I go to the truck check it out it's a beautiful truck to me and I do an inspection on it you know because I'm like okay I gotta inspect it you know so I'm looking through all the stuff and like with a fine-tooth comb type of an inspection not just like kind of a once over make sure it starts make sure there's nothing broken blah 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 <laughs> so it's getting to be about like 10 30 or something I'm like oh I better let them know so I called the lady and I said hey I'm happy with the truck she says okay come on in we'll get your stuff so what I thought it was going to be is just like um, you know, the, the contract and then maybe something else to just sign that I verified that it went over and maybe a couple extra things. She's like, okay, here's the stuff. Now everything's done in the app. Yeah. You don't get this big old booklet anymore. You get the stuff's on the app and she's like, okay, well you, here's your instructions for this part and this part. Um, there's, here's for the inspection. You're going to go through this and do the inspection. So I had to do the inspection again and check off things. And there were very few things that were on there that I didn't think to check like uh what was the one that oh if if the um if it turns off when it's idled for at least five minutes i didn't think to check that you know and it turns out it doesn't want to turn off so that's one thing i got to get um uh fixed on that but everything else is great so i went through this a second um inspection on that did that in the app and then um now i have the contract to sign 
I had a little hiccup there. I couldn't, I was like, what do I do here? You know, because I'm actually going to read it. I want to know, you know, what my payments are going to be. I'm going to know what's expected of me. You know, I want to be able to follow it to the letter. And so, um, after I get done posting this and stuff, I'm going to go through and I'm going to sign it. And then hopefully tomorrow I can get my APU fixed because when I went over to the bay to do that, I talked to the lady, they're like, oh, that's the issue. Perfect. We could do that in a jiffy. However, you have to, you have to email, um, success leasing, let them know what the issue is so that they can email us, giving us permissions to get into the truck to actually turn that part on. So I emailed them, but success leasing is closed by then because it was like two o'clock, two, two thirty. And they're closed tomorrow, but maybe someone answers their email on the weekend. I don't know. So I might have to wait till Monday to get that Monday to get that part fixed. Tomorrow though, I'm gonna see about getting stuff on the truck that I need, as well as like the refrigerator and the microwave so I can, you know, have some necessities. I'm not going to buy the bougie <laughs> mattress yet. I'm just going to get the complimentary free one. And then uh, just the other stuff that I need for the truck to get me started. Stuff I'm going to need for loads and everything like that. And then hopefully Monday night or Tuesday morning I'll be able to get out of here. Uh, my trainer's still here because he had a class today. And tomorrow he's going to be going to... Well, he's got to get something... Um, he's getting like a, an extra storage thing where you can put it on the, the stairs in the back a little I'm sorry I've been out in this heat all day like literally all day so my brain ain't working but he's going to get something installed to where he can have more storage outside of his truck free up some of the space inside of the truck and um, then he's going to go to Walmart to get some stuff I'm going to try and go with him if I can get some stuff and uh, should be should be good on my way after that and then I'll be starting my first solo load on my own. I'm pretty excited but I'm nervous because I want to do a really good job. I don't want to miscalculate my time or anything like that. Um, I just want to do well. So I think that's all I have for today. I try to keep these videos short on the shorter side but hopefully I gave you all the information you need for upgrading the pro maintenance class I was already added to that I was going to go to it even if I wasn't because um my uh, my trainer had suggested that I do it and he'd already taught me how to do the shoot repairs I just won't have the, the stuff to do that at this point right now but um I thought it was a really good class so if you come to upgrading and you're not on it find some time they, they have it every day apparently from like one to three or something like that so it's a free class it's free information they give you like a checklist of things that you can fix yourself to save yourself the time so i think it's worth it to take it like why not other than that i think that's it i think that's everything if you have any other questions go ahead and post them below and i'll do my best to, to get to you as soon as possible and hopefully i'll have an answer for you um i'm by no means an expert on anything um, but yeah, all right, y'all take care. Um, I will be posting more about my travels and stuff because I do want to be able to vlog um, about this, but I don't have any like set schedule because I'm focusing mostly on being a good safe driver and improving on my skills and my safety abilities and all of that. So with that, hope you have a good day and take care.